Welcome, welcome to our Thursday morning Mind the Moments gathering brought to you by Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare and Tufts Health Plan. And this is a place that where we invite experienced mindfulness instructors to speak with us about what mindfulness means to them and to discuss as a community how we can incorporate these practices into our daily lives. I'm Suzanne Rowe Palacino. Very, very happy to be here this morning with Tara Healy, founder and director of Harvard Pilgrim, Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare's Mindfulness Program. Good morning, Tara. Good morning, Suzanne. And likewise, delighted to be here with you and with this community. And uh, yeah, looking forward to heading into this weekend. Yes. Hopefully, uh, folks have a little time off this weekend. That's the hope as we get into 4th of July weekend. So uh, a special welcome to our regulars here this morning. Uh, we love seeing uh, all of the, the names of folks that have joined us for a while now. And uh, we especially wanna welcome new people that have joined this morning. And to describe our process for you, uh, we typically start off with a question for the group and then Tara will lead us uh, she'll share a few thoughts with us and just lead us in a guided, uh, about a 12 minute guided practice. And that meditation practice will be a mixture of both guided and um, some silent time as well. So after that 12 minute practice, we'll have time for any questions. Uh, so go down to the bottom of your Zoom screen and open up the chat and then just pick the, um, the blue drop down menu that says hosts and panelists and you can change it to everyone. And then folks can see your comments as you as they come in. All right. So how uh, do we want to start off this morning, Tara? What question do you have for Yeah, you? well, I'll start by saying, so I've reconnected with a childhood friend and it's been super fun. And we were talking about our history, American history. Mm. And um, he actually wound up sending me, I will show you this book, These Truths by Jill Lepore. And it's quite, it's quite a book. Um, but he actually suggests thinking of each section or chapter as, as a small book in itself, which makes, which makes the idea of reading this a little less daunting. Um, but um, as we think about our history and we approach the 4th of July um, over this weekend and uh, just after, you know, it does, this holiday signifies our freedom from Great, Brit Great Britain. And to me, there are the, the kind of the words that I think about are freedom, um, equality, and independence. And so my question would be, you know, of those three words, freedom, equality, and independence, is there one that feels mo most resonant for you to continue to work toward? And um, yeah, so is there one of those, and Suzanne will put it in the chat, um, but which of those words just feels most resonant to you personally um, in terms of your desire to continue to work toward? Because we know um, that that, that was the ideal standard, but that that's not exactly where we are. And um, you know, that it is, it is an ongoing process. And so Suzanne, I would actually ask you, you know, which of those words feels most resonant to you? Yeah, I, um, you know, initially I, I was going towards equality as well. Um, but I think the word freedom um, can have a lot of um, assumptions in it, mm -hmm. and that a lot of um, a lot of people just don't have the freedoms. I, I'm just thinking. Mm -hmm. of, I, I know we think about our own country many times, but just um, around the world, there's a lot of uh, communities of people that don't have freedom to move about um, in their communities comfortably. So I think about that yeah. as well yeah. as we celebrate yeah. our own country's um, independence uh, from England. It's yeah. there's, there's a lot of other things going on in the world where there isn't that type of freedom, you know, especially in the Ukraine and Sudan. Right, um, right. Yeah. So that's what comes. Yeah, up yeah. 
Right. How about you, Tom? Right. Especially those areas where there is a dictatorship is the is the rule. Yeah. Um, yeah, like it's hard to choose, I think, and to know that whatever whatever it feels resonant for you is is not the only thing, of course. But I would go with equality because I feel like, especially at the time of the Declaration of Independence, um, that it wasn't equality wasn't there for everyone. It wasn't for enslaved people. It wasn't for women. And so those, you know, those are, uh, that's what I want to work toward. And um, also using the practice of mindfulness and awareness to work toward those qualities with uh, wisdom, you know, to be guided by wisdom. And so that whatever I might do is not creating any harm and um, is done with um, thoughtfulness and a kind of responsiveness. So yeah, th those are the things that feel really important to me. Yeah, there's a mix of, of all three. Yeah. Um, yeah. And someone's mentioned, Tammy, I think um, about freedom as an initial step towards equality. Um, mm. There's a mixture of all of these. Freedom for all is the goal. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting to think about. And, and, you know, when we compare ourselves with other countries, we do have some freedoms that other countries yes. don't. Um, yes. So it does, yeah. it does give you a little bit of a sense of gratitude, but knowing Definitely. that there's a lot to be done. Right, right. And I think, you know, the capacity to really hold both. It's not, you know, it's not like we're there by any means, um, but to be, you know, sort of holding, holding out there this uh, ideal of what you would like to see and then being guided in all your actions around it by awareness, you know, by seeing clearly your intention, your desire for change, and what is the most skillful way to, to go about that. And it's even having, just having simple conversations with other people, and especially those who we have different views from, you know, where, um, and is it possible to have conversations where we are really listening and responding um, in a way that is um, useful toward that aspired goal that we have. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, a lot to think about there. Yeah. Yeah. So as, as we move into this holiday, I just, I thought I wanted to somehow just tie the, um, you know, what it means. Uh, I think sometimes with holidays, we don't, we don't necessarily really go back and think about, you know, what, what is the story behind that? So um, I know that I sometimes don't, so I'm trying to be more, much more conscious um, mm -hmm. in these days, especially with, with this particular holiday. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so let's let's go ahead and move into our 12 minute guided meditation for those of you that are new, just as Suzanne said, like a big welcome and grateful to have you and this will be fully guided there will be periods of silence so there will be you know two to three minutes at a time where you won't hear me. Um, but the idea is that you're going to select an anchor to. Uh, support the wandering mind. The mind will wander, not a problem. We're not trying to clear the mind. Each time it wanders, we come back to what I think of as a stabilizer. Um, it's kind of like you're doing push-ups for the mind. That could be the sensation of your breath. It could be a different body sensation, like the palms of your hands resting on the top of your thighs. And that feeling of that point of contact could be the stabilizer or the anchor that you return to when your mind wanders. You can also use sound, so you've got options. So let's go ahead and begin and um, start by settling into a posture that feels like it's gonna 
best support you this morning. Um, so that could be sitting or standing, even lying down. Um, but the idea, especially if you're sitting or standing, is to have a spine that is straight but not stiff. So you want to move slightly away from the back of the chair so that you're holding yourself upright, eyes open or closed. And let's begin with a couple deep breaths, making the exhalation longer than the inhalation. And let's begin by letting go of all that has happened so far this morning and releasing anticipation of what's to come. So fully arriving in this moment, bringing the mind and the body together, and really settling in to the posture, seated or standing or lying down. And just take a moment to notice the body. What sensations are making themselves known? Usually from the activity of your day so far. So you might feel a pulsing or a vibration or a buzzing in the body the beat of the heart. Uh, so take a moment to just receive what the body is offering. And let's move from whole body awareness to sound that may be occurring in the room or outside of the room. So go ahead and just expand your sense of awareness to include whatever is happening in your environment. And ideally soft mental note hearing. Let's bring the awareness back inward, coming back to the whole body, allowing sound to remain as it will in the background, not a, not a problem. Begin to find an anchor for the wandering mind, something that you can return to over and over again each time you notice that a thought has slipped in. It's not a problem. Make a soft mental note. Ah, thinking, soften the body and return to your anchor. So that could be the sensations that you feel when you breathe. And so that could be the rise and fall of the abdomen, kind of belly area or the chest or the nostrils or someplace else. And you could also choose a different body sensation such as the palms of the hands resting on the top of the thighs and the feeling of that, the really feeling from the inside and just staying with that. So staying with the sensation of breath or another feeling or sound. So if breath is challenging or a body sensation, you can open the field and use sound. So just seeing what's going to work for you this morning. Noticing where the mind is, releasing the memory or the planning, the narrative, softening the body, 
and escorting your awareness back to that stabilizer, tracking breath sensation or any other sensation in the body, point of contact, or sound. And again, noticing where the mind is, releasing thought, softening the body, and returning to your anchor over and over again.
And as we bring this meditation to a close, may we be peaceful and at ease. May our heart be soft and open. May we be safe and protected and our bodies healthy and strong. And may the merit of our practice be for the benefit of all beings. So whether your eyes were open or closed, when you feel ready, you can uh, reorient to the room that you're in. Usually do a little bit of a look around and, um, and just reconnect. You know, those words that you use at the end, Tara, um, really have a lot to do with uh, this, this theme that you brought up. May the merit of this practice be for the benefit of all beings. Yeah. Because the time that we spend in practice allows ourselves this, the space to, <clears throat> to uh, deal with some of these issues that we brought up earlier, I think with a little yeah. bit more compassion and empathy. Yes, um, yes. And the capacity to listen to views that are different from your own. Mm -hmm. you know to really because oftentimes you know too that there is a real constriction in the body when when there is a when you're in a conversation where there are differing views and the practice really helps us to see the constriction you know the tightness in the body and to just ground ourselves and oftentimes in situations like that too I'll just bring my attention to the bottom of my feet and just feel a sense of groundedness and connection there, um, you know, and just a remembering to breathe, you know, just to, uh, just to breathe. The, the breath helps us enormously and it gives us a little bit of space between impulse and action. So especially, you know, or even reactivity and responsiveness. So you're just creating the conditions for a more effective dialogue with someone. Um, and yeah, so um, the other thing I just want to say, which is tangentially related, is just in uh, during practice, whenever you're practicing, to know that there are just a lot of thoughts that, that occur while we practice. And to know that each time you see that thought, soften the body and return to your anchor, you are doing it correctly. This is the practice. It's not about having no thoughts in a serene, grounded state. Um, I just feel like it's worth mentioning that over and over and over again, to, mm -hmm. to know that the scene of the thought, the softening of the body, the returning, and just continuing to do that is what the practice what the practice is. And that ultimately over time helps create some steadiness. So, you know, when we're in situations of conflict or potential conflict, that we can just see more clearly what's going on and see more clearly our intention. Um, you know, our intentions uh, are not always so clear to us, um, but the practice helps us see that. Hmm. I just feel like that was probably worth saying. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, uh, I don't know this. I, I'm not sure I know. Maybe I do know the song by John Baptiste. I know John Baptiste. Yeah, um, yeah. I um, yeah. have to check that one out. I think I do know that. I won't break up to song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, Yes, and I think that um, Michelle, the the connections, you know, with these with these attributes that we aspire to, and our mindfulness practice are are really deeply connected, and have to do with our you know our intentions and how we engage in the world, and the, we have the capacity to create the conditions for a more effective interactions um, by seeing what's going on. That's what mindfulness helps us do is really see what's happening, um, especially with reactivity, because oftentimes when, when we're in a reactive mode, 
we just come out of the gate with something. There's not even a space or a pause. And uh, so this, this practice will help us increase that gap. Um, yeah. And not even just conversations, but the actions we take, the things we purchase, all of it. Hmm. Yeah. It, you know, I think about that often that um, many times I think uh, there's almost a, a feeling in conversation. I don't know if this is just in the West, but that, you know, if we engage with someone that we're looking for an answer or some reaction right away, and that makes us seem like we're smarter or, or you know, more ready to, to give a response. But I even have more respect for someone that pauses. And when yeah. I, when I say something or make a comment and someone pauses, it's, there really is, I feel like there's just a lot more thought going into the response. Yeah. Um, and that gives even more respect. Yeah. And less regret, <laughs> you know, I think because, I mean, my sense is that, you know, we are good people to the core and want to do well. And um, when we violate our own values, um, we see it after and it doesn't feel great. So, um, yeah, just really, you know, and using the practice to have compassion when that happens. So, <laughs> thank you. And thank you all for being here this morning. Um, we will not be here on Tuesday because Tuesday is July 4th. So as a, a, remind, a reminder to folks that we will not be here, but we will be back on Wednesday. I will be back on uh, Wednesday morning. So we hope to see you then. Hopefully yes. you have a wonderful weekend. I have a little time off to relax and um, enjoy the meaning of our, our holiday. Yeah. Thanks for being with us this morning. Tara. Thanks everybody. We'll see you all next week. Bye-bye.